Hello people of the world and beyond, Merciless Charizard here again, and welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Fire Emblem Awakening, Nobles Only Run. In the last episode, we managed to hold off some of Almi's forces at the Port Ferox, the Port Ferox, not the Skyver. Anyway, I also said I was going to go on a hiatus, but that's a lie. Yeah, I've decided from now on I'm just going to go pair up people of my own accord, so for now I've already paired up Olivia with Longclu and Cordelia up with Callum. For now, it was just to make some paralogs available for after chapter 13. Because I am going to be doing these in a certain pattern. Anyway, I also reclassed Lissa and Maribel to Dark Flyer. Because there's a certain skill I want them to get. And they also got a little bit of support. This tea is so <laughs> good! It's just, just divine, darling. The leaves are infused with a citrus aroma, so I was certain you'd like it. I like citrus? In all the years we've shared tea, you only mentioned the flavor of it's a citrus blend. Well, How funny that you didn't even know! That is funny. A little embarrassing, I guess. You know me better than I know myself, Mary Bell. That's hardly a surprise, darling. I'm your best friend. Also sister-in-law. <laughs> I know! It's so true! Wait a second. I don't know what can I see you like best. Well, no. That simply won't do its all. Why don't you take a guess? Mm, is it rose tea? T such a common flavor. Tea with milk? <laughs> Why not streak from a mud puddle? This is hard. You ever knew more about tea? What other kinds are there? Oh well, I suppose I'll have to take pity and tell you. My favorite blend is... Black tea infused with still warm blood and adult male girls in there. <laughs> So what is wrong with you? What matter of one matter of ladies use tea? It is simply not done. What's wrong with me? What's wrong with you? Who would try such a thing? Oh, and darling, it was only a jest. Now wipe your mouth, please. I actually believed you. All right, what's the real answer then? What's your favorite tea? Why, whichever ones you enjoy, darling. That's why I get to appreciate both the beverage and your enjoyment of it. So if you ever find a blend you're especially fond of, just say the word. Um, alright, I will. Thanks. I still kind of feel like that wasn't a real answer. Uh, hang on a sec. Sorry about that, I had to make a little cut there. Anyway. There are going to be massive spoilers up ahead. Like, extremely massive spoilers at the end of the chapter, for the most part. Well, at the beginning, too, but basically, if you care about spoilers, stop watching now. If you want to get the game before you get spoiled, stop watching. If you don't care about spoilers or you've seen it, enter at your own risk. Chapter 13 Of Sacred Blood. Greetings, Prince Krom. Please, you welcomes you. Aversa! What can I say? It seems fate has designs for me yet. What? You serve the new king, then? This Valadar? Yep. I do. They say he worships Grima. Yes. Of course he is, Grimleo. We are both believers. Elliot often says it was his fate that got him through, after Gangle's passing. It was a difficult time, but he kept order where there might have been chaos. We had meant to arrange an official visit to you, he stole, but ah, here's my lord now. Hi. What happened? An honor to finally meet you, sire. I am Valadar, King Regnate of Plegia. The honor is mine, good king. Is it possible we've met before some- GOD, IT CAN'T BE! I'm quite certain I would remember any encounter with Elysian royalty. 
Lucas. Yeah, I know. He was just like the assassin that came after Imran. And you must be Sir Lucas. You know me, sire? The whole world knows of Elise's master tactician. And indeed, I see the sparkle of wisdom in your eyes. But we killed him, Lucas. I know, but the resemblance, it's uncanny. How could he possibly... My, the negotiations haven't even begun, and already so much whispering. My apologies, King Valgar. We meant no disrespect. What should we do? Nothing for now. But stay close and be ready for anything. Then let's just get to it. Okay, how about a few ships and transports, and we'll provide some of the funding, you provide some of the funding. We think we have enough soldiers, and I can just provide strategy, and I think we'll be good. Legion can offer no soldiers, but we'll provide 800 warships and 200 transports. I guess that works. In addition, we'd be pleased to fully fund the campaign, what? Yeah, that's not suspicious at all. What? That is surprisingly generous of you, my lord. You could not ask for more, quite literally. You offer most all your assets. I would give troops as well, but our army remains in shambles from the last war. I trust the golden ships will suffice the sight of our commitment to the cause. Of course it will. Thank you, King Valadar. The honor is ours, my prince. I look forward to building a strong bond between our two nations. I bet you do. As do I. And if there's nothing else, my men and I must hurry back to Port Ferox. Oh, so soon. But I have one more introduction to make. Yes, and who would that be? A Hierophant, the highest of his order in all Plegia. So you lead the people in worship? We were just discussing religion earlier. I'm sorry, have I said something to offend you? The heart still sleeps, but the blood flows through it, and the blood is strong. Huh? Beg pardon, were you talking to me? Good Hierophant, I would ask you to lower your cow. In Elise, it is a courtesy expected of one in the presence of royalty. Yes. You are a long way from Elise, sir. But very well. Okay, so what? What? <laughs> is that better? What? By the gods! What manner of sorcery? He looks just like me. Oh, yes. My name is Lucas. Oh, and that was your name as well, wasn't it? What a strange coincidence. Why, that is rather curious now that you mention it. What are the odds? In any case, I believe we are finished here. We will let you be on your... Wait. Hold just one moment! What is the meaning of this? Why do you hire Fit and Lucas? I'm afraid we've no time for such trivial matters now, Your Highness. Trivial, my behind! We have aid preparations to attend to, and you have a long, hard journey ahead. Oh, and do be careful on your way back to Port Ferox. This time, you're the higher of Pleasure you can be quite treacherous.
It's me, Lucas. Huh? Huh? Who's there? There's no one. I'm alone. Voices in my head. Who are you? What's happening? Why do you close your heart to him, Lucas? Valatar? Have you truly forgotten? You were calling me. Uh, my head! Get out of my mind! <laughs> such arrogance! You dare take such a tone with your own father? Luke, I am your father. Yes, I went there. What? My... What? You are my flesh but a sacred blood. You are to serve a glorious purpose. Search deep in your heart. You already know it is your destiny. Oh, no. Get... Out! Why do you resist us, Lucas? Your rightful place is at my side. Not wasting your time with these doomed servants of Naga. Give yourself to Grima. Let me join your strength to the fell dragon. Lucas! Pa, not this one again. No matter. In time you will see the truth, and that is all it would be, a matter of time. Lucas, I heard sh- are you alright? I heard shouting. Uh, I think so. Yes, Crom, thank you. Uh, I'm fine. Fine is a poor choice of words. What's happened? King Baladar, he... He spoke to me in my mind. He said I was his... his son. What? Is this true? I, I don't know. But I also don't know it's a lie. As was I am to say it, I felt a strange connection between us. Oh, gods. That Hierophant doppelganger. Could he be the king's son as well? Are you twins? I don't have a twin brother. Uh, I'm sorry, Crom. I can't remember. But if I'm being honest, it will explain much. I'm not even sure I want to know the truth of my past anymore. No. You are yourself before you are any man's son. Remember that. Right. Thank you, Crom. You right? Can you walk? Yes. Yes, I think so. After all, I am standing. And suddenly... Bad news. We are under attack. Risen have us circled the camp. But we posted sentries! How did this happen? They made a stealthy approach, my lord. I've never seen Risen behave like this. Either they are learning our ways or someone is commanding them. Valadar, this is his doing, I'm sure of it. Equip anyone who can bear arms and tell him we fight for our lives. Okay, out, 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 out. Ring, ring. See, so, yeah, I want some defensive units as well. So he's already deployed this weird. Hmm. I know we're always kind of overpowered, but I'm going to bring him because there's someone that comes to this chapter who is fragile as all heck. Semi-fragile, not to mention he's not a royal. Those of you play this game, you know who the guy is. Oh, there's Mary Bell. Just want to make sure I deploy her. Anyway, even if it looks like there are a ton of advanced units, this chapter is pretty easy. All you have to do is defeat the boss. If you had a certain skill, you could pretty much do this in a single turn. Just like that. Wait, where's Rickon? There's Rickon. Let's not bring Marth then. Mm. Mm, who 
to who I want to bring. Or not bring, but where do I want to position everybody? Oh, also, I basically request everyone to their advanced class, and now they're all at least level 5, except for Marth. And of course, let's see Maribel are exceptions, because... I got the skill I want them both to have. Renew, I got Renewal, which basically heals 30% of health, no matter where they're standing. It's essentially relief, but three times is better. Or three times is good. I cannot talk these days. I don't really care that much right now. Mm. Oh, they're also going to be longbow archers. So that's not nice. Sniper's going to be kind of tough to deal with too, because I can de deal out a pretty big dish of damage. Sermon get all slippery. The only thing I can really say about this chapter is don't rush it. So it's in case, considering I can just level up at any time, I'll just try to get the weapons or extra items and then make my way for the boss. So you can get a silver bow and a silver axe, and I think that's it. Oh no, I can get a longbow from this guy. So yeah, just focus on priority around that. Let's go ahead and save, and let's go ahead and try this. Oh hi. What's that? A storm of crows? God, this is upon us! God, God, are you folks lost? Or perhaps the lost cause? <laughs> Who's there? Show yourself! God's breath, I can't see anything through all these damn birds! Shoo! Scat! Away with you! Oh, hi. What's wrong? Claustrophobic? <laughs> oh, I slay me. Not these risen to it first. This is no time for Jace. Hide yourself, boy! You know, I thought you were alright. Turns out you're all fright! <laughs> I wish you good luck killing these monsters, but... They're already dead! What? We are well aware! <laughs> the Ravens wanted me to give you a message. Ka-ka! Roughly translated, it means... Hmm... Now, what was the human word for that again? Trapes? Tripe? Oh, trap! Right! They say you're trapped. <gasps> we know, damn it! God, where do they all come from? Well, see, when a mommy zombie and a daddy zombie love each other very much... Oh my gosh! <laughs> uh, perhaps I should say the risen the trouble and silence you myself. Hey, wait, I want to show your cut! I mean, I can help you. I know magic. What do you say? Birds of a feather and all that? Those robes. The Plagian Dark Mage? Why would you help us? Oh, don't let all the joking around for you. I've got kind of a thing for killing. Most funny people do, you know? The two things must be linked somehow. <laughs> Ever talk to a jester when he's off duty? Those guys are some sick bastards. Oh, the Ravens also said to keep an eye on those fortresses. If you're nearby and when more monsters emerge, it could cause quite a stir. Uh, now I know that, he, well, that his voice actor also voiced Asbel, I can never look at Asbel the same way again. Though then again, I play Grace in forever, so what the heck. Curve with Roy so you don't die. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Gotta remember that after a grinding session. I guess I can just sit crawl up here. Let's go ahead and use javelin. Yeah, I'm probably not gonna be using Lissa and Maryville much because they're pretty high level. Not high leveled me. Whatever. All I need to know is that they have a ton of I'm just gonna stop talking, because I cannot think of what the heck to say. And I don't think there will be any harm just using a sword. Especially with that warrior around. Set you 
into a power. No freaking way I'm doing that. So I can't do this. Steel sword. We don't want you to moving. And we're going to enemy fire is not the best idea. Well, at the very least, he has a ton of health, but still, ow. <sighs> health doesn't really mean much when they get, like, a ton of attack. Especially with those big axes. Oh, as far as actual plot chapters, after this there will only be two more instances in the plot, main plot, where we'll see Risen. I just find it odd how they don't make it a big point in the series, like, not in the series, like, how they make it seem like such a big threat, big threat early on, and then all of a sudden they just make them scarce, except for skirmishes. I'm not really going to question all that much. Yeah, these guys are going to do nothing. Do we need to go over this again? Because I have a feeling we need to go over this again, Krom. Yeah, that's the annoying thing about longbows. They can hit you from a long range, however you can't fight back when they're at that distance. Apparently, Rickon is angry that he's not going to be able to kill a longbow archer this turn. Not that I blame him, of course. Oh, I. Everyone seems to be dual striking today. Except for the pair down at the bottom. The pair is down at the bottom. Jerk. <clears throat> yeah, 
and fireball your face. Now go level up for Rickon. Ah, uh, you really need speed, man. They got some defense, but you need speed. What the heck, Kron? That was a 20% chance that hit. Okay, that sort of makes up for it. The only thing I hate is that Aether has such a low activation percentage, basically equal equivalent to half your skill. Okay, now that I think about it, I didn't check this warrior. I'm just glad he doesn't have the skill that I hate dealing with every single time I go through this game. I'll tell you about it later once we see it. Okay, not bad. Need a little bit more luck, but Hey. Who else is there? I think I ju got just about everything. These guys only appear with a longbow. If I try to kill him right away. Mm. Well, I don't think reinforcements will appear at the bottom part, or top for this turn, top of the map. Sort of kill my way. Well, I want to see get some experience, so I'll just have the Green Bear. Luckily, he doesn't have a bow. If he had a bow, then I wouldn't even be, even try this. Okay. Too. Oh, and there's one dangerous skills, Vengeance. Basically, it has probably the highest chance to activate. It's double your skill. That's what its percentage is. Basically, however much damage you take in, it adds it to your damage output. So it's a very useful skill. Whoa! Yes, so whoa. Have you seen Ether? Yeah, the first hit of Ether, as I already told you, soul it. Hang on. Anyway, however much damage you do when soul is activated, half of it will go back to your health. Was fast. Cow. My goodness, I didn't even have to try this map. Ah, well. That's the last of them. Gods, I thought I might never. Crawl, look out! Not again! 
Huh? Yeah. We say what? <sighs> okay, really quick, I have to call bullcrap on that one. That assassin had zero damage output, high chance to hit, and a decent chance to crit, but no damage whatsoever. I mean, it would have made sense if they allowed to activate lethality, but otherwise, what's the point? Kronk could have just parried and skewered him with the lance. Or the rapier, because it would have taken two hits with an iron lance. Anyway, thank the gods you're safe. You called me father. Did I... I... Uh... Perhaps we might speak privately? Perhaps we should, yes. Oh boy. I don't even know where to begin. I already know you're not Marth, though I have nothing better to call you. But I'll ask nothing of you that you don't wish to reveal. Whoever you are, Elise owes you a debt beyond repaying. Thank you, but I think I prefer you know the truth. As you wish. Yes. Here, look closely and all will be made clear. Better with Lucina? I'm so sorry. Yes, Father. I'm sorry. I just all respect at once. Father. Should I call you something else? No. It's just strange to my ear. I like it. Father. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this will take some getting used to. Crom. I'm sorry, Crom. Uh-oh. Hmm? Oh, Lucas, what is it? Well, let's just say you're screwed. I mean, it's just that you two are out here alone and Marth is crying. This is how ill rumors are born. All right, Mary Bell, be calm and handle this like a true woman of good breeding. Or just punch him in his cheating lying face! Ugh! Maribel, you seem upset. Oh, upset? Upset? Is it? Is that why you're flocking to other women? And you brought her here! Why? Just to rub my nose in it? I think we should tell her, Lucina. Of course. Lucina? But that's... Maribel, this may be hard to understand, but this is our daughter. True, Mary Bell. I am your daughter. Here, look closely. Prove it for yourself. You have the brand! The same brand carried by all House Elise's bloodline. This is Lucina's pattern. You see now? No, I don't! Did someone kidnap her daughter and, and, and then lost her? How does that make sense? Peace, Mary Bell. Your baby is right where you left her and perfectly safe. I am her from another time. 
from a time that has yet to be. You mean the future? One in ten years hence, after history takes a dark and more destructive turn. What? Why? What happens in the future? The fell dragon Krima is resurrected. His roar is a death knell for man, a scream that silences all hope. Death everywhere. Krom? Our whole company? All of us? Dead? Uh, I don't know what to say. A tale that beggars belief, and yet the truth of it stands before us. She carries Falchion, my same sword. And the same sword the first exalt used to defeat Grima long ago. Your blade and mine are one, Father. It was... it was all I had left of you. There is only one Falchion, Lucas. I believe her. Yeah, so do I! Heck, I saw her come from the future! She fell right out of the sky! I've never seen anything like it! Thank you, Aunt Lissa. Naga, the Divine Dragon, feared that mankind would face Grima again. In preparation for that day, she devised a ritual. It allows one to return to the past and alter events already written. I made the journey together with others, but we became separated. Don't worry, Lucina. If they're out there, we'll find them. Truly, my daughter? Yes. I swear it. I suppose it is rather obvious. So strong and lovely. Oh, by the way, I'm pretty sure you saw that. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Sumia popping up out of nowhere is basically a glitch or mistake. I can't, I don't know exactly how to describe it. But no, it's not Yandere Sumia. I refuse to believe that. Thank you, my lady. What's wrong with mother? I thought you might mind. Yes. Of course not, you fool of a girl. I love you and have every intention of showing you off to everyone. Well, excuse me. Mother. Oh, mother. <laughs> I couldn't be more proud of you. Mother. I miss you more than you'll ever know. See what I mean by spoilers? Yeah, that's not all the parallels, but I just wanted to be able to unlock a few. Anyway, this... Okay, let me go over things first. Now we know who Mark truly is. Mark is actually Lucina from the future, Krom's daughter. Essentially, this works in a way similar to genealogy of the Holy War, where depending on the parents, the children will inherit certain stats and will be able to inherit certain skills. As such, that's why I wanted to get renewal for Mary, though. As, okay, let me try to explain this better. Well, from where I'm at, uh, why can I never explain this properly? Anyway, Prom will always pass out either whether he has it or not. However, Lucina's mother will always pass down a skill of your choice. So you can pass down whatever you want at a certain point. In this case, it ended up being renewal. Whatever skill is passed down from the mother, 
Or basically the parents of the other children will end up getting, aside from one, will always be the la will be the skill in the last skill slot. In Maribel's case, renewal. Modifiers are also a thing. Modifiers are basically how higher or lower a stat will go for the character compared to the class's main basis. Or main base max stats. So, the scene will be more of a magic user by the end of it, however, her magic growth still won't be that good right now, so, for the most part, lower class is still the best thing for her. I don't really know how to say anything else about this. Other than whatever skills the parents can get, she can get as well. However... If you end up marrying Kromps as a maiden, as in marrying the other females off first, or not getting a, a, like a single support point with Krom or any of the available females you can marry, then Lucian will just be another clone of Krom, but with higher max stats by the end of the game. I'll have to explain more later, it's kind of complicated, I'll probably just put a caption because right now I am doing a terrible time explaining things. Also, whenever you get a child, you get C support unlocked immediately. Okay, is there anything else I think I need to say? Oh yes, yeah, so what I'm gonna do, essentially... Hmm, hmm, hmm. With these parallels opening up, I just wanted to get Cordelia's and Olivia's unlocked so I could have access to the ones I want to do. Essentially what I plan to do is after this chapter, I'll do two parallels and alternate between one chapter, two parallels, one chapter, two parallels. Until I get to the point where there are three paralogs available, in which I'll do all those, and we won't have to worry about any more paralogs. And in that stretch of time, I'll probably end up getting more females I mean, more characters paired off. However, I'm going to take priority over the children that will be... Essentially the children of the royalty characters. Found paralogs 5, 7, 9... Wait, sorry, 5, 7, 8... 9 and 12. That's about mm -hmm, mm -hmm, 5 paralogs. And when I. Yeah, I'm gonna do them all in order, but once those are done, then I'll start doing the other paralogs. And that's when I'll start maxing them out and getting the skills I want to pass down for that DLC I was talking about in the last episode. Well, that took way too long for me to explain because I cannot talk or think straight. Anyway, let's go ahead and get some supports out of the way. Might I ask a lesson, Father? I would love to learn the sword from you. You're a master in your own right already. What can I possibly teach you? You're likely better to start training alone where you can hone your own style. But I was hoping that you might... That we could... Hmm? I'm sorry. If it's a bother, I won't insist. I never said it was a bother. I just meant that with your level of skill, you'd be... <sighs> Fine. Go, pe go fetch a pair of practice blades. Wonderful. I just so happen to have two right here. Well, someone's certainly prepared. Very well, let's begin. Yes, sir. Huh! Yeah! <sighs> Impressive as ever. I was certain I dodged that one, but you nicked my shoulder. Still, you had me soundly beat. Had you not held back on that blow to the chest, I'd have a few shattered ribs. I was right to think you'd still have much to teach me. We'll have to make these lessons a habit. Wait, you didn't just... Did you throw that match just so we continue doing this? My father, I would never... Devious. I still have to keep a closer eye on you. <laughs> sneaky, sneaky. Father, guess what? I found a wonderful dress in the town market. Oh, do go on! It was gorgeous. I thought it'd be just perfect for you, so I bought it. I was thinking you could try a different style for once. Hi, Lucina, what's a lovely surprise! Now let me get a good look at this gorgeous... Uh, dress? Oh, dear. I've never seen so many unusual colors and shapes in one piece of clothing. I know, it's very modern. See all the giant pink polka dots? If you look carefully, you'll see that each one's a portrait of Emery herself. I wish when father sees you in this, he'll just scream with delight. Really? I bet he'll scream, all right. Hard mother, I didn't catch that. I'm sorry, Lucina. It's just that, well, this isn't exactly my style. 
I am very grateful for the thoughts, but I don't think I can wear it. Oh, I was sure you'd like it. Well, perhaps next time I go to the market, you can come and pick out something, pick something yourself. I know it seems frivolous in times like these. In the blight of future I come from, I often fantasize such simple pleasures. Why, Lucina, what a classy, well-bred dog you've grown up to be! I'd be delighted to go to market with you, delighted and honored. Wonderful, and when we go, I'll wear the new dress. Oh, God, no! Pardon, Mother? I'm pretty sure Crom wouldn't want you wandering around in that. It'd probably give him a heart attack. Anyway, in the next episode, we'll be starting off with Paralogue number 5. I'll be getting my favorite character this entire game, yes! Anyway, I'll see you guys then.